out of nowhere, a plop sound, and he looked down, and there it was. What? Human excrement on the ground. You know, this feels like a great big metaphor for something. Today, we're with YouTubers overnight as they explore a museum full of artifacts accumulated by Ed and Lorraine Warren over their extensive career. The Warren Occult Museum is one of the most unique and terrifying places on Earth. Most terrifying place on Earth? That's a hell of a take. What about North Korea or Snake Island off Brazil or Andrew Tate's basement? I mean, I could go on, but I think you get my point. The Warren's Museum is just a dank room filled with junk. A room full of dark mysteries and even darker secrets. A collection so sinister, it is kept under lock and key, not only to keep people out, but to keep what is held within it from escaping. My opinions of Ed and Lorraine Warren will probably not surprise anyone. They took bullshit to a whole new level and they were hugely successful about it. Thank God they weren't around during the YouTube era a warren's channel would be enough to make me want to play russian roulette with an uzi all of the cursed items come to life no they don't visitors do not only look and study each item on display but the items watch study and listen to you no they don't one wrong move one disrespectful action could mean an attack on your well-being no it doesn't anyway Overnight start the video off with this recruitment montage, which looks like it belongs in a bad heist movie. A little help from some old friends. Let's skip to the museum, because this drags on worse than Ocean's 8. Truly, if not for Ed and Lorraine, I do not believe this YouTube channel would exist. Ugh, as if I needed another reason to hate on the Warrens. Everyone's here. <laughs> for, I think they're going to come out in a minute to meet us. An early 1980s VHS camera. <laughs> That's a fossil. Oh, and, so, See this? this is the way. This is the way. This is the way the Warrens would have done it. So the logic here, and I'm using that word very loosely, is because the Warrens used this old school recording gear back in the day, that overnight should do the same thing for some reason. Imagine if they caught real paranormal phenomena and no one could make it out because it was recorded on what made it look like four giant pixels. We have hey. Tony. Hey! <laughs> hey. hey. Oh, oh, man. How you yeah. doing? This is Tony Sparrow, son-in-law of the Warrens, married to their daughter, Judy. These are very low quality compared to today. I rest my case. These guys rather use a gimmick than to actually use something professional to capture paranormal phenomena. Makes me think they don't really believe this shit themselves. It's tough to match them as a team because Ed was a seasoned investigator, but also a demonologist. In other words... In other words... A bullshitter. He's always asking, why do you keep those objects? He destroyed them. No evidence. He said, it's for people who want to learn more about the paranormal. This is evidence. You know, it's only evidence if you can prove the items do what you claim they can do. Otherwise, you have evidence that you have multiple inanimate fucking objects. You're an inanimate fucking object! If you can say that word three times fast, I'll let you in. <laughs> say it, go ahead. Paranormality. Paranormal. Pa bullshit. 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 Okay, if I actually pronounce it correctly, it's actually easy to say. Wow. Wow. My name. It's kind of cool, right? What you're going to see immediately wow. when you first walk in here. Clutter. Lots and lots of clutter. Marie Kondo would have a field day. Here, though, we call this the shadow doll. Look at it. People say, why do you call it a shadow doll? Well, look at it. Look at, look at how it looks. Yeah. That was created specifically for... One reason and one reason only, to cause distress to other people. Like airport security. There's powers out there that we don't know about. But here we have just a regular, like a household mirror, right? Yeah. But we call it a conjuring mirror. Why? Because people have tried to conjure spirits through mirrors for many, many different years. We had a gentleman from New Jersey, actually. He's now at a mental institution because he dr drove him crazy. What he did was he replicated what we call a psychomantium. A psychomantium is a darkened room. When I say darkened, I mean blackened. You would sit down in a chair here. So all you could basically see or barely see is the mirror. This guy, he would sit here for hours looking at the mirror and say, Grandma, 
Grandma, I want to see my grandmother. He would sit there for two and three hours, beckoning them to come to him through the mirror. Two weeks he did that straight, nothing happened. Jeez. But then, suddenly monstrosity, faces of monstrosities started to come through to this guy. It scared the living heck out of him. It frightened him so badly, like I said, he ended up in a mental hospital, this guy. I said, hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. The conclusion our tour guide reaches here is that the guy was of sound mind and just sat in front of a mirror for hours on end to conjure spirits, as you do, and then turned to madness by paranormal circumstances. Are you fucking stupid? Yeah. And anybody out there that thinks that you don't live after you die is wrong. Anyone who claims they know that there is an afterlife is either crazy or lying. A lot of the people in England and Scotland, they do believe in ghosts. They don't talk about it much, but they believe in it because they've experienced it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there, Spooky. I'm not going to speak on behalf of all British people, but none of my friends and family believe in ghosts, other than my mum and my grandparents. A few aunties and uncles, maybe some cousins, a horoscope reading ex-girlfriend, and maybe some ex-work colleagues. But other than that, none. John told me a story. John Kenny Hurst told me, told me a story. He's sitting on the couch in the Enfield house. All of a sudden, he said, Tone, I hear this plopping noise. Plopping. I said, yeah. He goes, and I looked down, and in front of me is this big pile of crap. That is one big pile of shit. Human crap, but it was big, like horse size. But it was right there. I said, well, did it dematerialize again? He goes, no, we had to clean it up. What? It just, out of nowhere, a plop sound. He looked down, and there it was. What? Human excrement on the ground. You know, this feels like a great big metaphor for something. In the infield house. I'll tell you this much. They weren't there for months or years. They were only there for maybe a week. Guy Leon Playfair, who was the lead investigator in the Enfield case, said in 2016 that the Warrens were there for one day. One day. Lorraine on the set of The Conjuring 2, they started crying, they were hugging Lorraine. And they said it right to the crew and me. You're the only ones that ever helped us. Why the fuck you lying? Why, Why you always lying? Come over here guys, I'll show you the animal. That though. case is so much larger. This item here is probably the most dangerous item. That's why it's in a case. And I'm not going to touch it. I never touch it. Not with bare hands. Huh. People say, well, you know, didn't you bring it to Las Vegas? I did bring it to Las Vegas. Oh my God, what a load of bollocks. Annabelle is so dangerous and can never be allowed out of her cage unless absolutely necessary, unless someone's going to get paid a bunch of money to take her to Vegas. So the story of Annabelle, Lorraine and Ed got a call from two nurses. They said, we have this item and we think it's causing a lot of problems with us. Can you come over? So they went over the house and Lorraine. They visited these two girls. I know it's going to sound illogical and crazy. As opposed to everything else you've said? They're sitting at the breakfast nook and the doll's next to them. All of a sudden, those two flimsy rag hands levitated onto the table like this. Insane, I tell you! It, it, ah! It, ah! Now the girls look at each other. The, the other nurse says to Donna, she goes, Hey, the doll must be trying to tell us something. And the other one goes back and says, Well, I know a psychic. Why don't we call her in? We'll have a... We have like a, a seance or something. Here's what the psychic says. I'm picking up the spirit of a young girl who was killed in a car accident outside your apartment complex. She's about seven years old, and her name is Annabelle. She's in your doll. Totally rational so far. Yeah. Now the psychic didn't know what the hell she was talking about. Finally, we agree on something. I just had a dream that that doll there was crawling up my leg, and it got to my neck and started to strangle me. That was his dream, nightmare. What's he do? He grabs the doll off the couch because he's, he's angry and he's nervous. Grabs the doll, he picks it up, he throws it all across the room on the carpet. He says, that's just a raggedy and doll, can't hurt anybody. And this is where the story ends. Please like and subscribe. Psychic wounds appeared on his chest and on his stomach. Four this way and three this way. They came through his t-shirt. Like somebody took a scalpel and they could see the blood coming through the t-shirt. Do you really expect me to believe that? He didn't know what to do. He said, you know, I'm not versed in this kind of stuff. He's what you call a warrant. The Warrens! So over here is, is the, the movie, movie doll. Is the movie at all? Oh, wow. I did this not is one of that. the movie dolls. That's one of the dolls right there. The Warner Brothers was super nice and allowed us to have one. Yeah, it's no wonder they changed the Annabelle doll for the movies. The Raggedy Ann doll looks about as scary as Piglet. Now, do you believe this is just a normal doll, or do you believe because of 
the intention they put into this for the movie that it also has. Well, that you never know. That's why she's in a case. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I was asking. That's exactly. one of the reasons you never know. It's a movie prop. Movie props aren't dangerous. Unless you're around Alec Baldwin. Annabelle is not to be messed with, you know no. what I mean? Except if you've been offered a bunch of money to take it to Vegas. We had some people here one time on a tour. So you having a good time tonight? She shows me the pictures that I took and the girlfriend took. <sighs> Behind Annabelle's eyes were other eyes looking left and then looking right on the two separate pictures. In other words, like this. And they're looking that way at her. At her. Behind her eyes, those button eyes, were another set of eyes looking that way and looking that way. What? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And, and they're, it's real. He's not going to show them to anyone, but trust me, bro, they're real. Yeah, this is how evidence works in the world of the paranormal, folks. Like a witch could say, I want something bad to happen to Tony, to Elton, and nothing happens right away. It could happen in, in a few months. They pick the time and the date. January, nothing happened. February, nothing happened. March, April, May, June, July, nothing happened. August, nothing happened. September, nothing happened. October, nothing happened. But November, you got a parking ticket. Sorcery. How can these guys not see how flawed this stupid argument is? Thank you. This is this has been You're the best welcome. tour. Th welcome. Thank you so much, man. This is this is incredible. I'll leave it here. There are other videos from overnight while they're at the Warrens Museum. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to cover them. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment and let me know if there are any other ghost hunting videos you'd like me to review. Cheerio.